So good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. As I've been introduced, uh, my name is uh, Ezekiel Sweba, and I'm from Tanzania Revenue Authority. And uh, today I will make a presentation on the paper that uh, we did, of course, in collaboration uh, between Tanzania Revenue Authority, UN WIDA, and the uh, local university in Tanzania, the University uh, of Dar es Salaam. And the title for this uh, paper uh, is uh, uh, The Effect of a Risk-Based uh, Approach to Tax Examination. And uh, we are drawing evidences uh, from <clears throat> Tanzania Revenue uh, Authority. And uh, we will uh, come across the following uh, contents. We'll see uh, part of the introduction and the directed, uh, see the empirical strategy and the data that was uh, used and a, a bit of the graphical um, uh, inspections, and, that, and then we'll see the uh, implication for the uh, study. So, uh, the main focus and functions of many uh, tax administration has been based on the following uh, uh, four areas. One is to increase uh, the tax, uh, expanding the tax base, uh, enhancing the tax compliance, uh, minimizing uh, tax evasion using uh, various, uh, of course, enforcement uh, strategies, and um, increase tax uh, revenue as the major uh, uh, goal and expectation for uh, many uh, uh, tax administration. Um, we can uh, try to check on the sustainable development goals, and uh, here we are drawing a, a reference uh, from the uh, meeting that was uh, held in Addis Ababa uh, in 2015 uh, that was uh, uh, addressing the taxi initiatives in Africa. And they said in order to uh, meet the, the goals for the uh, 17 sustainable, sustainable Development Goals, we really need to support our tax systems. And uh, we uh, really, really see the commitment from our developing partners to supporting uh, developing uh, countries into these uh, areas. And of course, various uh, enforcement strategies, including uh, random audits uh, and examination, are uh, used by these tax uh, authorities. However, uh, it has been confirmed that uh, risk-based approaches and uh, machine learning in these uh, practices are limited. And, uh, uh, there are methods uh, which are attested and are promising uh, improving uh, detection and uh, probabilities for non-compliance. So uh, literature has been confirmed that. Uh, but limited and um, existing systematic evidence on the impact of these uh, risk-based strategies uh, is observed in, uh, in literature. And uh, for the, our understanding, uh, no studies has been conducted before uh, to assess how risk-based compliances, interventions are working uh, in developing countries. And uh, this paper now draws uh, and they're going to text the examination uh, revenue impact of this risk-based tax examination, which was uh, piloted uh, in Tanzania Revenue Authority. And the pilot, of course, was blind uh, jointly by TRA and the Finnish Tax Administration, and uh, we, we, we received fund from the government of Finland. And uh, the intervention specifically uh, intended to flagging taxpayers from the examination on the basis of data-driven uh, risk assessment, and uh, it was designed uh, in two ways. One, to improve the existing practices of choosing taxpayers to be examined uh, in which uh, the practice which was aligned on the uh, staff uh, description. And uh, interven this intervention was limited, of course, to the uh, personal income tax or corporate income taxation. And uh, the following uh, five uh, objective was intended during the planning of this intervention. One is to increase the revenue uh, collection but two uh, is to improve the skills of these uh, uh, tax officers who are into these uh, uh, procedures or, or conducting this uh, uh, examination process. And of course, uh, the third objective 
it is to focusing on the um, efforts to the risky taxpayers instead of uh, just uh, uh, selecting taxpayer and then ending up uh, of not uh, receiving the uh, intended objective. And the objective number four, of course, is to treat equally and uh, all taxpayers by upholding the principles of, of fairness and uh, justice in taxation. And the uh, last objective uh, which was planned for this uh, intervention, of course, was to reduce the time uh, spent by examining taxpayers with uh, limited uh, uh, risks. And uh, directly we go to the uh, approach or the empirical strategy that, that was used during uh, testing this, uh, 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 our examination. So we use the methodology, the diff in diff methodology, and the outcome variable uh, with the taxable income, and we provided uh, the Dar es Salaam are the treatment uh, variables, and we given uh, the value of one if the tax offices uh, is, lo is located in Dar es Salaam where the intervention was taking place. And, uh, and Dar es Salaam comprises of about uh, five tax regions, and um, the rest, which is zero, we provided it to the other tax regions which are, are outside Dar es Salaam. And the post or the variable receiving uh, the value of one, uh, if that uh, outcome uh, it is from the uh, intervention year, which was from July uh, 2019, uh, which is the year in which we tested up to June 2020. So we taken this uh, as the financial years and we uh, did for zeros if uh, that information uh, is of the past years where the intervention uh, was not there. So we uh, tested or draw the FEM level panel data, which of course we extracted from uh, Tanzania Revenue Authority system. And each year contained about 25,000 observation, which we believed it was uh, uh, enough information to test our intervention. And it covered the period uh, of uh, uh, four years, uh, from 2015 up to 2020, where to the last year of the uh, uh, drawing our information. And, and of course, it was the year where the uh, intervention was uh, taking place. And uh, we are checking on the uh, data and uh, uh, table number one on your left-hand side, uh, it, it entails the number of firms which uh, were adjusted uh, in, with ad adjusted taxable income, which was observed to increase from one financial year in both the treatment and the, um, uh, the control group. If you can see, uh, starting from 2016 for the control group, and uh, if you can see, uh, starting uh, from the same year in for the treatment group, and you compare to the 2019-20, uh, uh, all these taxable income were increasing based on the uh, information that uh, we uh, have drawn. And the table number two uh, summarizes the number of adjustment that have been taking place uh, during the pilot period for the treatment uh, group. And table number two, there we uh, drawn some uh, uh, observation where we observed one of the tax region in the piloted area, which is Ilala, has relative more uh, adjusted income, uh, depicting like 70 uh, a percent, uh, if you compare to the reaction from uh, other tax regions in which uh, this uh, uh, intervention was uh, piloted. And we are asking ourselves maybe uh, why this observation now is coming. And we uh, heard some uh, 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 a result in hand, and we say probably uh, there are relative uh, low knowledge of recording and reporting uh, financial transactions for a taxpayer, or perhaps there is a high responses of taxpayer to adhere with the TRA uh, regulations. But again, the question was why this now is happening during this time and not any other time. So we uh, uh, said maybe it was the impact of the piloted intervention. But again, still we need to uh, test if it was uh, really uh, observed or not observed. 
But again, we, we, we checked critically on the information by describing and we observed some of the characteristics of the firms uh, in the controlled and the uncontrolled uh, firms uh, before and after the piloted interventions are compared. And the firm in the treatment areas were observed to, uh, to be large and more uh, profitable. But again, the largest number of firms that uh, we observed during uh, this analysis were from this uh, service sector, wholesale and uh, uh, retails. And uh, again, uh, we went further now to test the assumptions which now uh, will come up and, uh, and, and see if our uh, assumptions and uh, the uh, methodology was uh, critically uh, in place. So we apply the different differ uh, methodology, as I said before. And uh, of course, a crucial assumption in this uh, uh, diff and diff is to test the parallel uh, trend assumption uh, before if we, it, it, it is holding. And uh, in the absence of the treatment, the average um, uh, difference in the outcome between the treatment and the control group are observed to be uh, remaining uh, similar. As you see on your left hand side, uh, that table, uh, uh, this assumption was holding uh, properly well. And after the intervention uh, during the uh, 2019, uh, it, ob it, it was observed that there is a change. So we want now to measure uh, the impact during that change that is, was ob observed. And uh, quickly, now we go to the um, results which were observed uh, during our analysis. And uh, our result, we confirmed that the, uh, it shows a 10 to 15 increase in the adjustable uh, taxable income where the risk-based uh, tax examination were implemented. So this was tested by our, our methodology and uh, we confirmed that there is an increase in the adjusted taxable income. And uh, this would suggest the use of the uh, intervention to flagging taxpayer uh, could improve the efficiency uh, of tax examination and uh, lead to an increase in tax uh, uh, revenue. And of course the impact of, uh, was found in, in the corporate uh, income taxes, as I said before, it was limited to that area, and they arise predominantly uh, from the service, from the service uh, sector. And again, we went further uh, to show the pilot uh, growth in, ta uh, in tax revenue in the piloted area, main streams on, uh, from the increase in the amount of the tax paid. And we observed that the number of firm filing income adjustments remained constant and not affected the uh, tax revenue which was collected. And this highlights the fact that focusing on improving the, the efficiency of the tax examination is more beneficial uh, for the TRA than conducting uh, more tax uh, examination uh, uh, cases. And uh, again, uh, we tested the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the cost of uh, implementing this uh, intervention if it was uh, uh, cost-wise. And uh, we tested this and uh, uh, we measured uh, that the cost to, uh, of the intervention was costing about uh, uh, 60 pound and the estimated revenue uh, which was increased at least during the uh, intervention period was about um, 18 million uh, pound during that period uh, of uh, intervention. So we confirmed that uh, our, um, our intervention was cost effective because it was at least uh, giving us um, a, a substantial uh, revenue uh, collection during the, uh, that period. And uh, now we conclude by providing the um, implication for our study. And we have drawn uh, some four implications. One, it is possible for the risk-based tax examination uh, to increase tax revenue collection uh, in developing countries. So we cement and build on that. And again, there is a tax revenue potential when firms are undergoing uh, tax uh, examination. And again, the improving the efficiency of tax examination can be more beneficial than conducting additional uh, tax examination. So it's better to uh, rely on these uh, uh, risk-based uh, intervention so that we can see uh, uh, we are 
um, examining risk, risky taxpayers who will be beneficial in our, our areas and not investing more uh, of the effort to the uh, taxpayers who does not uh, have risk or any risk sensitivity. And again, uh, these uh, interventions hold the great potential for being further uh, expanded because uh, the results uh, have been confirmed uh, to yield uh, more results. So we are expecting to uh, uh, expand it to other areas because uh, uh, this, it was beneficial. And of course, to see uh, if it is uh, viable or not uh, viable again by automating the risky-based uh, uh, system through our system so that we can be able to uh, get potential and uh, more revenue. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.